Hello everybody, this is Boaz Feiler. I'm your friendly neighborhood evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 25th of 25th, the 28th of July and the 5th of August 2017. So we have so much to talk about, so much to talk about, I don't know where to begin. Let's begin with the fact that today the 28th the moon is conjunct uh, Jupiter in the sky and Libra go out and have fun i mean it's in the night time in europe it's the evening time in the states just enjoy yourself it's about feeling free it's about squeezing the zest out of life it's about expanding our consciousness and being involved in spiritual activities or things just just that just make us feel good and happy about the fact that we're alive it's a great time for traveling or learning new things Tomorrow, the 29th, the moon would be still conjunct Jupiter, but it would be squaring Pluto. And that's a sensitive day, and that's a time that we could be a little cranky and make uh, mountains out of molehills, and we have to be careful not to do that. But all along the next two weeks, up to the mid, mid-August, we have a couple of transits that are following us. We have the sun conjunct Mars in Leo, we have uh, the square between Jupiter and Pluto, and we have Vesta and Mercury conjunct walking together in the sky. What, it is, what is it all about? Well, it's about growing. It's about pushing ourselves ahead. It's about giving birth to ourselves. It's about the fact that it could be hard. It could be stressful. It could be not working out the way we imagined it would. Things are working out differently, there's different outcomes, different feedback, maybe there's some delays, but hey, this is life. This is life. It's messy, it's imperfect, and it's wise. If we're talking about the Sun conjunct Mars in Leo, it's about taking that creative force within you and giving birth to it and finding more independence through it. Just not being self-absorbed. So there's a lot of tension there to have forward movement. There's a lot of tension there to separate, to go and boldly uh, um, um, pioneer a new road and a new way and, and be someone and do something that you haven't been and done before. It's stressful it's stre and it's challenging. And we have to do it nevertheless. It's important. We have the square between Jupiter and, and Pluto. And look at these two planets. I mean, Jupiter is all happy, happy, joy, joy. What have you swallowed, my dear friend Jupiter? And Pluto is, oh, this is a dark, dark world. I'm going to go see Megadeth in the uh, arena uh, next Saturday night. And he's like all goth and dark, you know. And we have these two characters, you know, that hippie and that heavy metal dude in a square. Uh, Pluto is all about whatever is lying underneath in our emotional hotbed, you know, underneath the crust of our earth and flows there in that primordial lava of emotions within us, all these unknown protocols underneath our surface simmering, simmering. It's about our need for power. It's about our need to feel wanted and chosen and understand those intricate mechanisms that make us thick and dive in there, dive into that black abyss and come up with the golden grail. This is Pluto. On the other hand, there's Jupiter there that says, hey, philosophy can give you wisdom, spirituality can give you wisdom, opening your mind up to different cultures and different lands can give you wisdom, broaden your horizons because this life is not about the limits you set but about trespassing those limits and overcoming them and this is where they meet Jupiter and Pluto because remember it's the cusp we're talking about the cusp between the eighth and the ninth house right now this is where the archetypes meet through the overcoming through the evolution through the death of the old and the birth of the new Pluto Scorpio we understand something we haven't understood before and we swear by that new truth and we abide by it. Ninth house, Jupiter, Sagittarius. 
and we are sure that that's it. We've learned everything that there is to learn. We now know the, ups, the, the, the absolute truth. And of course, that's not true, and it's, it's, it's only a cycle. So what we have to be careful from is uh, not becoming egomaniacs, not going on ego trips, because Jupiter enhances everything it, touch, it touches. And if, the, if we're talking about plutonic activity, we can, we can become uh, obsessed with power. We can become obsessed with sex. We can become obsessed with being attractive or, or feeling attractive, feeling powerful or, or dominant in a way. We have to be careful not to be cruel or violent. These are the darker aspects of this square. And, and, and of course, we need to take it into a feasible place, not to overexpand. Not to do something that is not in touch with reality, that is not sustainable. And other than that, we have Vista, the goddess of our sacred fire, eternal fire within us. The things that we hold sacred in our lives, the things that are most important to us. And Mercury, the god of navigation, of thought, of communication, of knowledge walking together in the sky. So there's two aspects for that. One hand, we have to navigate our life. We have to talk and think about the subjects that we hold sacred, the things that are most important to all of us in our lives. All of us into the world. This is in Virgo. This is about healing. This is about fixing the world. This is about fixing nature. This is about giving service. This is about adapting a healthier lifestyle, personally and collectively. And so on the one hand, we need to think and navigate our lives according to that sacred fire that burns within us. On the other hand, this is a great time to learn new material, learn new data, mercury regarding things that we hold sacred, Vesta. So it's a great time to study as well. Other than that, on, to, on the 31st we have Venus, planet of love, relationships, income and satisfaction, personal, um, um, how you call it in English, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm stuck a minute, um, self-esteem. Venus is also connected to self-esteem, how I feel about myself, what is my value in my own eyes. So we have Venus going into melodramatic, touchy-feely uh, cancer on the 31st. What that means is that we can gain a lot of satisfaction just by being at home, being with family, or being with people that we feel intimate with. A lot of satisfaction, a lot of love in these places. It's harder if we need to go out into the cold hard world and try and get some satisfaction there. Venus in Cancer is not so good there. It's better on her own, I'm sorry, on her home turf, in her own environment, then she excels. One more thing is that we can be a little bit too childlike too naive or too melodramatic regarding our relationships, our love, or our need for satisfaction when Venus is in Cancer. On the third, the Moon is conjunct Saturn, which means that we need to, uh, uh, um, to be uh, less critical and not as cold with ourselves and with others. But before that, also on the second, the second is a very energetic day, we have the Moon in Sagittarius and it's trining Mars so it's a great day for traveling it's a great thing for a great day to progress things at work it's a great day for physical work it's a great day to move ahead but on the third as I said the moon is conjunct Saturn and Uranus the planet of the high mind of uh, advanced knowledge of sudden changes of uh, uh, esoteric knowledge of groups, of 
um, our friends and our place within the group is going retrograde. Now, like any other planet going retrograde, it provides a different aspect, a different viewpoint regarding the subject, the subjects ruled by the planet. So what are the subjects ruled by Uranus? Aquarius. So first of all, my friends, my social circles, the group, the uh, elites that I uh, play a part in. And what kind of part do I play within the group? What are the subjects that I choose to advance society in? Social advancement, uh, uh, the advancement of humanity. What are the subjects that I hold dear and that I work with like-minded people to actually bring positive change to in our world and in our lives because it's all about humanitarian activity and it's all about what I do as an individual Leo on the other hand of that axis with the group Aquarius what is my unique gift to the group that's the axis the Leo the Leo Aquarius axis that the nodes are in right now so there's a lot of thought and change of thought and change of paradigms regarding things that we hold dear and want to advance in life. We can change the people we hang around with. Our friends can change. Our social circle can change. And the things we advance can change. We can feel much more rebellious at this time and rebel against things that once we hold true. We held true. We can also see all kinds of reforms and processes of change that would be halted and reversed at this time. Because again, we're looking at things from a different viewpoint. So sometimes rebellion could be against the rebellion itself. <coughs> Other than that, when uh, Uranus goes into retrograde, and the retrograde will last up to uh, January 3rd, it would be between the 28th degree of Aries and the 24th degree of Aries. So if you have planets there, or across it in Libra, or sideways, um, or sideways, uh, of course, uh, um, Capricorn and... Uh, cancer you could be more affected by this transit but Uranus would still be in what we call the shadow of the retrograde from the beginning of January up to um, April 18th only then it would come back to the point in which it started at retro its great retrograde now during the times that we have Uranus retrograde we could feel a bit like we are in a heightened Mercury retrograde. Because remember, Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury. It is in charge of electronic communication, of mass communication, of advanced communication. And most of the communication we use and utilize today is electronic, advanced, or mass which means that our internet, our cell phones, and uh, our TV, our radio, all of these are subject to malfunction, malfunctions. And generally speaking, it's harder to um, convey a clear message during this time. We have to work harder at it. So that's about it about the Uranus retrograde. Other than that, on the 5th we have the moon conjunct Pluto, be less obsessive, uh, don't be so dramatic, and detached, be detached from your emotions, no mountains out of molehills, please. That's about everything I had to say for this week. I hope you're going to have a beautiful week ahead. This is Boaz Fire, and of course, for private lessons, consultations, uh, uh, courses in evolutionary astrology, and anything else you just want to ask, Call me. I'd be glad to speak with you. And of course, commenting and sharing are blessed. Bye-bye.